and welcome to another FAQ Monday. I'm your host, Fluff. I have my, let's see, today we're drinking San Pellegrino with clementine and peach flavor. And I got my iPad with some questions. It must be Monday because, uh, wait, is it Monday? Yeah, it's Monday. <laughs> First question. A song slash album guitar tone you thought I had figured out, but was completely wrong about? Yes, that is a great question, Don. Um, there's a couple. Strung out, twisted by design. I always thought it was their uh, two channel triple rectifiers, cause that's what they were using at the time. And when I saw them on the 98 Warp Tour on the Twisted by Design album cycle, they sounded just like the album. They sounded so good. Well, fast forward like, I don't know, like five years ago, I get to know Chris, the bass player for Strung Out, and I asked him, I was like, hey, um, total guitar nerd question. Uh, what was the what was the amp on on Twisted by Design? And he goes, uh, oh, it was a PV5150. It's like an unboosted 5150 into a, like a Marshall 412. What? Okay, well, I was very wrong for 20 years about that album. Also, uh, Foo Fighters, Color and the Shape. Thought it was a dual rectifier. Sounds like a dual rectifier. It sounds like an incredible dual rectifier. It's not a dual rectifier because on Warren Hewitt's uh, breakdown with, uh, with, uh, I can't remember his name right now, but it's going to come to me. You guys are going to remind me in the comments. When they break down the song Everlong, he says, no, nah, that was just, uh, that was a Fender. It was a Fender uh, Tone Master, I think it was for all the dirty tones and all of the clean tones for that matter. They just turned down the RD standard that they were using for the entire album, which also I did not know. Yep. You never know what's gonna be used in the studio. That one, uh, that one, I was just like, I literally blacked out. I was like watching it and I was like, oh, I blacked out. I was like, Where am I? What? That was not a dual rectifier? Sounds like a dual rectifier. Not a dual rectifier. When running amp sims like Neural DSP, how much do you use custom IR loading? Uh, Lyle, it depends on the individual plugin and the individual sound I'm going for. I know how my favorite IRs sound. And so I can get a sense of what they would probably sound like with any given plugin. However, I always just use the stock stuff, at least initially. Uh, I wanna get a sense and give it a fair shake, but I wanna give it a, give a sense of what the plugin is gonna do. So if I don't immediately like the sound, I don't instantly go, oh, I'm gonna switch to uh, my own IRs with the cab section, for example. Um, I will switch amps and then I'll switch, you know, the virtual overdrive pedal and things like that before I go to IRs. But if there's something like really nasty, like in the high end, when it's just like, I don't know, when it's just really honky sounding or really top endy, I will change out uh, the cab to uh, my own custom IRs. Just depends on the situation and how I'm feeling and uh, what kind of tone I'm going for and what kind of plugin it is and what kind of uh, offerings they have as far as their own built-in cabs in the individual plugin. But yeah, never hurts to uh, try your own. What style slash brand slash size picks do you usually use? I've been hooked on Dunlop Tortex Green and Purple forever. Steve, great question. I use, uh, these are Dunlop Tortex. They're basically, well, I don't know if you can see that. These are my own custom little doodads. Um, come on, focus, there you go. These are Dunlop Tortex 88 in a custom color. Uh, they're called Triangle, they're not the, hard edge they have they basically are the edge of an Ultex in tortex form and they're three-sided there's a few reasons why i went to these picks last year at nam um they're physically large they're huge picks but i feel like i can get more leverage on my thumb with picking i have to work less hard when i strum the guitar also when i smoke the end of a pick which i do very often, I go through tons and tons of picks. All I have to do is just, all I have to do is just rotate it and rotate it. And like, that's, 
yeah, sorry you can't see that, but um, I basically get three proper guitar pick edges per one guitar pick. I love that, it's very utilitarian. I love the size of these picks, just gives you a lot to grip onto. Uh, pri prior to that, I was using regular Tortex 88s, and before that I was using Oltex, and then before that I was using Jazz 3XLs. And before that, most of my most of my youth was spent on uh, Tortex 88 greens, for sure. Sometimes yellows, but most of the time it was green. Every once in a while, purple. But uh, yeah, that's what I like. That's what I use. It's kind of what I stick with. If Gibson offered you a signature guitar, what would it be? Stinkface McPoop Lightning. Great, great username. I would probably. Mm, I don't think it would be a Les Paul. Maybe it would be a Les Paul. I don't know. I guess it would be a, um, it would be an RD. It would be a cool new take on the vintage RDs. It would be full scale, it'd be 25 and a half inch instead of uh, 24 and three quarters. And it would, well, I don't know. It would it'd be cool, but it'd probably be an RD or a Les Paul. I don't know which one. Probably an RD, and if it did well, do less ball. Well, get some signature guitars. Everyone has them these days. Is there a lunchbox head with direct recording that's not stupidly expensive? Daniel, great question. Um, the PV6505MH goes direct. That's not, I wouldn't consider that expensive. I mean, it's 500 bucks. Everyone's idea of inexpensive or expensive is different. However, yeah, that kind of tech, takes money, man. Um, you know, eventually you should save up for a Rev G20. If it's a lunchbox head that you desire. But like I said, the PV6505 MH is a great option. There's lots of options out there. You don't have to go super expensive, but I will say with the lunchbox and direct recording combination, you're gonna pay a little bit of money for, uh, for you know, for it to sound good. And in my opinion, the Rev G20 does that beautifully and does that the best as far as the lunchbox heads and the direct connectivity and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, if you have any, if you guys have any suggestions for Daniel, leave them down below in the comments. Pretty please. Will Drake Under do another live stream in the near future? CJ, the answer to that is definitively, no, nah, probably not. Um, we got, we're in the middle of album number two. That live stream that we did do was you know for us kind of the end of that of the world is in your way album cycle really in a lot of ways so you know will we do ever do another live stream or live thing at some point yeah probably will it be anytime soon probably not sorry and that does it for this faq monday if you have a question feel free to leave them on down below in the comments or hit me on over at twitter it's a fantastically awesome place. Just kidding. Fuff out. If you liked the video you just watched, please consider subscribing. And if you wanna further support me and what I do, consider using some of the affiliate links down below in the description of this video. Go on over to Sweetwater, buy yourself something, and help me out at the same time. It's a win-win for both of us.